Blogger. The heavy wheel tractors of the MAZ-535 and MAZ-537 series became true titans of the Soviet Army. These vehicles were developed to tow heavy artillery systems in the new space era of the Cold War, which was marked by the rapid development of missile weaponry. Blogger, they became indispensable transporters for a variety of strategic and tactical missile systems. Equipped with powerful engines and all-wheel drive, the Minsk Super Heavy tractors, paired with special trailers, became reliable tank carriers. Thanks to their excellent driving performance and off-road capability, they provided armies with a crucial quality, maneuverability. The emergence of such equipment was facilitated by the rearmament program of the Soviet Army, which was initiated by Stalin's successors after his death. The military component of the USSR, which was based on the legacy of World War II, had become significantly outdated by the end of the first post-war decade. In order not to fall behind in the arms race with the United States, its main rival in the Cold War, the Soviet government issued a decree on June 25, 1954, regarding the creation of production capacities and the provision of the necessary artillery armaments to the Ministry of Defense of the USSR. Special Design Bureaus SKB, for the development of military equipment were established at the main automobile factories of the Soviet Union. At the Minsk Automobile Plant, on July 23rd of the same year, a secret Special Design Bureau No. 1 was also created by order of the General Director, and it was headed by designer Boris Shapishnik. On September 1st, this bureau received its own closed experimental production workshop. The main task assigned to SKB, one of the Minsk Automobile Plant, was to develop all-wheel drive four-axle tractors MAZ-535 and MAZ-536 for towing artillery systems and other weaponry weighing 10 and 15 tons. The Ministry of Defense set high technical requirements for the future vehicles, a half-meter ground clearance, the ability to ford water up to 1 meter 30 centimeters deep, to climb slopes with a steepness of 30 degrees, and to operate in a temperature range from minus 50 to plus 50 degrees Celsius. The development of the MAZ-535 began in September 1954, and by May and June of 1956, the first two prototype units of the MAZ-535 had already been assembled. Off-road testing revealed significant shortcomings in the frame, which could not withstand dynamic loads. Therefore, the designers at SKB-1, working under emergency conditions, designed a new riveted and welded frame with a trough-like shape, made from steel sheet metal. In the summer of 1957, three newly modified trucks, which received the name MAZ-535A, were sent for control testing in various climatic zones. In addition to a new, more robust frame, the tractor received a reinforced body, an engine compartment ventilation system, and also began to be equipped with a winch. Besides this, changes were made to the all-metal cab. It received a new two-section windshield instead of the three-section one found on the previous truck. Rounded fairings with marker lights would later be installed on the sides of the cab. The third additional infrared headlight, which was located in the center of the front panel of the cab, will disappear. This was due to the decision to stop installing night vision devices on production vehicles. Based on the results of the tests, the MAZ 535A was recommended for mass production in 1957. Such a rapid introduction of new high-tech trucks into production was facilitated by the experience of MAZ's own designers, who, despite the relatively short existence of the Minsk automobile plant, just over 10 years, had already achieved significant success in launching into production the largest and most innovative mining dump trucks in the USSR at that time, the MAZ-525. Having your own experience is great, but what would Soviet automotive industry be without borrowing from abroad? And of course, such borrowings were present during the design of the new, most powerful Minsk tractors as well.
The chassis of the MAZ-135 was based on design solutions borrowed from a German-captured armored vehicle, which was the world's first all-wheel drive, four-axle armored car, featuring interaxle differential locks and independent suspension on all wheels. While the chassis layout was borrowed from the German armored personnel carrier, the overall concept of the MAZ-535 was very similar to the secret developments at the Detroit Arsenal, where in 1952 prototypes of four-axle tractors were built, the Teague 57, a ballast tractor with a 10-ton payload, and the Teague 58, a semi-trailer tractor with a 12-ton payload. Both military vehicles were equipped with a 540 horsepower engine. You don't need to be a technical expert to see that these experimental four-axle tractors from the Detroit Arsenal share a similar layout and design with the MAZ-535, the same cab over engine shape, with the cab extending beyond the front axle. The engine compartment is also located behind the cab, above the two front steering axles. This ready-made concept made it possible to avoid unnecessary time and money expenses that inevitably arise when searching for optimal technical solutions at the start of a project from scratch. Was the concept of the Detroit automotive engineers truly optimal? Maybe, but the Americans abandoned it, having built only prototype units. Meanwhile, in Minsk, these four-axle tractors went into small-scale production as early as 1958, which was set up in the experimental workshop of the MAZ plant, and was gradually transformed into a full-fledged assembly shop with a testing section. From 1959, production of the MAZ 535V semi-trailer tractor was also established. Later, the production of the MAZ 535 was moved from Minsk to the Korgon Wheel Tractor Plant. The MAZ 535 featured a unique, in-house design transmission, which included an integrated single-stage hydrodynamic torque converter, a three-speed planetary gearbox, a two-stage transfer case, interaxle and interwheel locking differentials, and planetary wheel reduction gears. In total, the vehicle had 16 driveshafts. The main innovation in the MAZ 535's design was the hydrodynamic torque converter, which provided smooth variation of torque depending on road conditions without interrupting the power flow to the wheels. It also helped to smooth out shocks to the engine and prevented it from stalling under overload. The tractor's gearbox has three forward gears and one reverse. On the second and third gears, it is possible to lock the torque converter. The transfer case operates in four modes, high gear, low gear with differential lock, which is used for off-road driving, and neutral, which allows the winch to be engaged. The control system is equipped with power steering. The steerable wheels on the truck are those of the first and second axles. All wheels have independent suspension, with lever torsion bars and hydraulic shock absorbers. The only exception is the MAZ 535V tractor unit modification, which has a bogey suspension on the rear axle group. The braking system is of a drum type with a hydropneumatic drive. All wheels of the MAZ 535 are single tire and equipped with a centralized tire inflation system. Thanks to individual valves on each wheel, it was possible to disconnect a damaged tire from the inflation system. Behind the cab, in the engine compartment of the MAZ 535, a 12-cylinder V-type naturally aspirated diesel engine D-12 A-375 was installed with a displacement of 38.8 liters and a power output of 375 horsepower. This power unit, manufactured by the Barnaval Transmash plant, was one of the transport versions of the famous V2 tank engine which during World War II was installed on the legendary Soviet T-34 tanks. The engine could be started either with a 15-horsepower electric starter or with a pneumatic system that included a 10-liter compressed air cylinder. To make starting easier in winter, the engine was equipped with a special tank-type preheater, which could heat the coolant to 80 degrees Celsius in 15 minutes, even when the outside temperature was minus 40 degrees Celsius. At the same time, the oil was also heated. At the end of the 1950s, the first serial MAZ 535A vehicles were used to tow 152mm M47 guns. 
But already at the beginning of the 60s, after the start of active construction of ballistic missiles, which, according to the plans of the Soviet military and political leadership, were to become the main carriers of nuclear warheads, most of the Minsk four-axle tractors were repurposed to tow specialized trailers with intercontinental ballistic missiles. It was in this role that the MAZ-535 was first demonstrated to the public on November 7, 1961, during the military parade in Moscow, where it towed a special trailer with an R-14 missile. The official adoption of the Minsk tractor by the Soviet Army took place on July 16, 1962. Later, for transporting the ARF-16 missile with a launch weight of 150 tons, a two-axle AT-139 trailer was developed for the MAZ-535. At the next parade in Moscow on May 9, 1965, the tractor towed an experimental GRV-1 missile with a launch weight of 117 tons on this trailer. In 1959, the experimental MAZ-535B chassis equipped with a lifting mechanism for the artillery section, was used as the base for a trial launch platform for the tactical complex Onyega and the operational tactical system Latiga with a frontline ballistic missile. The first tests, conducted in April 1961, ended with the destruction of the missile and its chassis was deemed too weak and underpowered for such purposes. In August 1960, Development began on the long-range unmanned reconnaissance system Yastreb with a new reconnaissance aircraft, the Tu-123, which could conduct photo reconnaissance along a flight path 80 kilometers wide and up to 2,700 kilometers in range. It was launched from a launcher mounted on a two-axle semi-trailer, towed by a MAZ-535V with armored protection for the cab and engine compartment. This system was adopted by the Soviet Army in May 1964. The most in-demand vehicle in the series was the MAZ-535V tractor unit with a balancing suspension on the rear wheel bogey without any shock absorbing elements. This truck was used in tandem with the 25-ton MAZ-5248 semi-trailer for transporting tracked vehicles and missile systems. Production of the MAZ-535 continued in Minsk until 1961, after which its manufacturing was moved to the Kurgan wheel tractor plant, where small-scale production continued until 1964. In 1957, a single prototype of the 9-ton ballast tractor MAZ-536 was built for towing artillery systems weighing up to 15 tons, which was the first to be equipped with the most powerful 525-horsepower version of the D-12A diesel engine. The vehicle successfully passed acceptance tests, but the Ministry of Defense put forward new technical requirements for the tractor's towing capabilities, which had to be significantly increased. Therefore, all further work on this vehicle was halted. The unfinished 536 model in the series was replaced by the more powerful MAZ-537, the development of which began in 1956 and proceeded in parallel with the smaller MAZ-535 and MAZ-536 tractors. This model was developed at the request of Soviet rocket engineers, whose rockets were growing larger and heavier every year and required powerful tractors to tow them to the launch pads. Starting in 1960, the MAZ-537 wheeled tractors began to be produced in series, and on July 30, 1962, the vehicle was officially adopted by the Soviet Army. Unlike the MAZ-535, the MAZ-537 model was exported to the armies of socialist countries friendly to the USSR. In its design, the MAZ-537 is similar to the MAZ-535. The main difference is a new variant of the tank diesel engine B2, a 12-cylinder D-12A-525 engine with a power output of 525 horsepower. In 1959, a special chassis MAZ-537B was also built, and in 1961, the 2P-20 missile launcher with the R-17 ballistic missile was mounted on it. This vehicle was equipped with a side control cabin and rear folding supports. During testing, this missile system showed unsatisfactory results and was not adopted into service. In addition, modifications were built such as the MAZ-537L, an airfield tractor for aircraft weighing up to 200 tons. 
A small number of civilian tractors of the MAZ-537 are modification were even built, which were equipped with a power takeoff gearbox and a TT2 trailer dolly. It was used as part of PV-481 pipe carriers in the construction of oil and gas pipelines, but did not become widely adopted. All these variants and modifications of the MAZ-537 were produced in small quantities by special order of the Ministry of Defense. But the true flagship of this model series was the heavy MAZ-537G tractor unit, which served as an indispensable transporter for all types of armored vehicles in service with the Soviet Army. The tractor worked with all types of heavy military semi-trailers and had an increased maximum saddle load of up to 27 tons. In later modifications, the MAZ-537G could tow semi-trailer low loaders with a total weight of 68 tons. Besides armored vehicles, the tractor could also tow heavy missile systems and various equipment. Evacuation tractors KEDT and Technical Support Vehicles MTP-A4 were created based on the MAZ-537. These semi-trailer tractors became the most widely produced modification of the MAZ-537 series. They were built from 1964 to 1989 and became the foundation for new generations of semi-trailer tractors. For about a decade after production stopped, the old MAZ-537s remained in service with many armies of post-Soviet Eastern European countries. But gradually, the MAZ-537 stepped down from its pedestal, making way for newer and more economical tractors in service, while retaining its status as a true legend.